This is Scott from My Life's Reward. Welcome to the channel and welcome to the video. Here we have a trip that uh, we're going to Drummond Island. We're uh, pulling our ATVs behind us. We are in my son Kyle's Jeep Rubicon 2021. This is uh, the first time that Kyle will have had his Jeep on Drummond Island. And we're going to do some riding on our ATVs. And we're also going to take Kyle's Jeep on some of the trails. And then uh, to Marblehead, uh, we're not going to actually do the steps up Marblehead. We're just going to go up to the steps. And crossing the Mackinac Bridge is always exciting, as usual to me. And I always like to include a little bit of footage. Uh, just for those folks that know what it's like to go across the Mackinac Bridge. Or uh, those that aren't familiar with it. So... We have a, a, I think it's Shepler's uh, ferry there that uh, was, uh, I believe, doing a Mackinac Bridge tour underneath there. Here I'm uh, looking at the rear video camera to make sure the trailer is pulling good, just to give you a view of that. Here we're paying our total going across the Mackinac Bridge for the vehicle and the right, single six. axle trailer. It's Six dollars. Thank you. Coming into St. Ignace here, and uh, we're going to grab some lunch. We're stopping at the Driftwood. And uh, it's a motel, also a restaurant. And I had a pasty, pasty, pasty. Well, anyway, it's a traditional UP uh, thing. So something you might want to try. Here we have Castle Rock, for those that might be familiar with coming into the UP. Uh, a little bit of a, I don't want to say a tourist trap, but anyway, it does look like something that uh, is worthy to climb. The line was uh, quite long, uh, and this is nothing. I mean, we're starting now to approach the ferry, but we were well outside the city limits uh, a couple miles back. Well, yeah, probably a couple of miles. Here we're on the, uh, on the ferry, and it's starting to... Uh, well, you see a little bit of wind action there and some waves. It was choppy. And uh, here we're pulling out of the tour. And again, it was windy and so a little bit of chop going on. Also had the, uh, there was a ship that was loading or unloading. I'm not sure, probably loading. It was the Manitowoc that you will see here in just a moment. That was a little bit of a treat. My wife and I have taken the SS Badger out of Ludington several times to go to Manitowoc, and we spent several nights over Manitowoc over the years. Nice place to visit. And Two Rivers, uh, it's also, that's also a nice town as well. Here we're coming into the dock. The wind is coming out of the north, so they're taking it easy here coming into this since uh, this is to the south here they want to give that a wide berth These boat drivers are so skilled at what they do and all the different things they have to address and take care of, whether it's wind or waves or people, and uh, just making sure they keep everything in order. And it's our turn now to drive off the ferry, and this will be our entry to Drummond Island.
We're going to check into our hotel and grab some dinner. And then we're going to go take the Jeep on the trails and uh, work our way over to Marblehead. And then we'll continue our journey to Marblehead. Though a lot of these holes, water holes and things look intimidating, most of them, the majority of them, I would say 80 or 90% of them have a hard base to them. And uh, so it might look like you're going into a pool of water, but you're not most times. And there's a hard, there's hard uh, stone underneath. Now, the thing in most cases you have to worry about are the rocks and the boulders that are hidden by the water. You just have to be careful so you don't hurt your equipment. There is one, there is one area on the island, and we approach it, I'll identify that, that it's pretty deep, I would say. Uh, it's too deep to take a quad through most times and a jeep, but I know that there are some people that have done it. Now, there are exceptions to some of these areas when you're over between over around the shale beach area and uh, out on the, on the would be the east side of the island. There are Jeep trails and those if when they're full of water can be treacherous because you don't know how deep the tracks are. And uh, so when you go into them, like we're going into this, and let's say we're going into it with our ATV, even your, even your Jeep, you just don't know if there's another two or three foot track that you're going to go down into. So, so especially with your ATV, you've kind of got to go slow. And when you start seeing things go uneven, you might want to you know, back out and try a different way. But that would really, there, and there are, a few other spots on the island in this area, in the central part of the island, that you do have to be careful. There are some deep trenches that might be filled with water, so you got to kind of use care. But most of these, like this, looks pretty intimidating. But it's it's totally doable, And you just have to watch out for those rocks that are sticking up and the ones that are just below the surface that you can't see. And sometimes when people aren't driving on the island, or there's not very many, you can actually see the water clear up and you can actually see the bottom. And you can see what's there. But most times somebody else had just gone through here and it's all stirred up and, and the visibility is near zero. Oh, uh, this is the one that I was talking about where it would just, that would have been too much for us to do. I wanted to give you a bird's eye view of that, but we elected not to go through that. Here, we're heading out to Marblehead. We're actually on our way out there. The road's quite nice initially, and then it gets, uh, you know, a little more broken up and then you'll start seeing some of those water holes and things nothing that's not able to be passed so as long as you have the the right kind of vehicle to do it
our first glimpse of Lake Huron here. And uh, eventually here, after we cross a bridge, we're going to be able to actually go on the rock beach and get a nice view. This creek empties out of three different lakes and it dumps into Sitgreaves Bay. And it's unnamed along with the different lakes in, that are upstream from that. Here we're seeing Sitgreaves Bay and we're gonna go down to the shoreline here and take a closer look And we're continuing our trip up to Marblehead and we just left that bay area. These are the mini steps that I had a little trouble climbing. Uh, once we got a rock underneath one of my tires, it was fine. I thought Kyle's Rubicon was going to climb right up this thing. Uh, it had a little bit of trouble. We had just gone through some water like I had done with my Jeep. If you look at an earlier video on my channel, he has locking differentials. I thought it was going to go right up, but he had a little bit of trouble here. But uh, then he backed up and he reposition himself and he climbed right up there so no problem you can see that puddle in the background that we just went through kyle thinks that if the tires were dry he might have had a little more success on that first pass So here he gets up there with no problem, slips a little bit and the, sh and the Jeep shifts some, he kind of reworks it a little bit. And that shift right there, that was the right thing there. And he'll do that again and he'll go right up. It's starting to get dark, but we did make it to the steps of Marblehead. I know that Kyle could have gone down here and made it back up. Going down is the easy part. Getting back up is the hard. I'm certain his winch rope was compromised. We did have a spare, but we didn't have it attached. And it was starting to get dark, so we just didn't feel like it was the right thing to do.
Here we're approaching the mini steps and going down on our way out. Other than dropping the hitch on a uh, on a ledge there, it was uneventful. We just loaded on the ferry from Drummond Island and we're heading back to Detour. The wind conditions are much better than when we came on and uh, the waters are much calmer. And there are hardly any vehicles on the ferry here and there might have been maybe six or eight of us. And here we're getting off the ferry into Detour. And you can see there's just a handful of cars in line there. Uh, maybe about seven, seven cars there waiting to get on the ferry after we, you know, after the cars unload. And when you have these small number of cars that are going back and forth, they do hold to the schedule. Uh, is it, so they wait at the dock on both ends. Uh, for the time so that might be helpful if you're planning for those uh, departure times and that sort of thing um, I don't know if they hold to the schedule as much when they have backlog lines I tend to think they probably don't they try to probably unload load and unload as quickly as possible because that line was going when we came into the tour it was going out uh, at probably a good mile or so past this yellow blinking light. And uh, so it took us a while to, I think it was about maybe two to three hours of wait time before we could get on. We were quite a ways past this construction sign. Assuming that construction sign didn't move, we were past the curve. So maybe it wasn't quite as far as I thought, but it was still a ways. Here we're approaching the Mackinac Bridge. St. Ignace would be on the left. And we're going through the toll area first initially on the St. Ignace side. There are only tolls on one side. That's St. Ignace side. And it's a little late. Uh, it's probably here about 9-ish, 9 o'clock. And we're heading to Indian River to stay two additional nights for some ATV riding. What was kind of strange was the St. Ignis side of the lights weren't on but the Mackinac side was so uh, that was interesting never seen that before to end this video I do have some footage from a drone on, on Marblehead that I wanted to share with you so that's what's playing in the end thank you for visiting the channel and uh, thank you for watching this video and until next week take care and thank you